What's up everyone, welcome to the Surfside PPC YouTube channel. Today I'm going to go over six different ways that marketers can use Google Trends. Now there's an endless number of ways you could use Google Trends, but I'm going to go over some of the main features that you can utilize to come up with some different content ideas and make sure that you're completely covering the topics that you're covering. So let's come back over here and start with the six different things I'm going to go over. Number one is going to be recently trending searches. So right from the Google Trends homepage, and you can access Google Trends by just going to trends.google.com. It will pull up this page, and I have mine currently set to the United States. So if we scroll down here, they have some examples of looking at how to explore. So when we come over here on the left-hand side, we're gonna go over the explore section. But under home, you're gonna find trending searches. You'll see it as you scroll down the homepage, recently trending. So first, they'll give you 10 different of the most trending topics right now. And if we go to more trending searches, every single day, they're gonna have 20 different trending searches. So if we scroll down here to Tuesday, November 15th, which is yesterday, you can see there's a total of 20 different topics here and all of the different things that were trending yesterday. And if you click on a specific topic, they'll show you exactly why they're trending. So if we come back to load more, that'll open up the next day. So Monday, November 14th, and exactly why everything is trending here. So it could be a great way to find all sorts of really popular trends. And the other thing that you can do is if you click on real-time search trends, there are categories here. So let's just say I run a sports blog, I cover all sports, I wanna make sure I'm covering all the trending topics. I go to Google Trends, I go to trending searches, real-time search trends and sports, and you're gonna see the exact things that are trending the most over the past 24 hours. And if we keep scrolling down here, you're gonna see all sorts of different topics. So it's one way to find some of the most trending topics and if you're looking at real-time search trends, you can actually look at different categories as well. So if I'm covering business, for example, you can see the things that are trending the most over the past 24 hours in terms of what people are actually searching for. So coming back over here, that's recently trending searches. So next is gonna be topic and search term research, and this will be through the explore section. So if we come back over to Google Trends and you go to explore, what you can do here is explore different topics and search terms and even compare them against each other. So you'll see, we'll use this example here where they have soccer versus American football. 2004 to present, you can see the interest over time. You can see geographic breakdown. You can see interest by subregion, related search queries. American football, same thing, interest by subregion, related queries here. So you can get some more information about multiple topics or search terms and actually compare them as well which can be useful if you're looking at interest over time and looking at which topics are actually a little bit more popular than others but what you can do here is if we just come back home and we enter a search term or a topic here so let's just do something like insurance so let's say i have an insurance blog so i want to make sure that i'm writing about all sorts of insurance so you could either do insurance as a search term and then it's gonna pull up some different categories as well. Auto insurance, home insurance, life insurance, renter's insurance. So if I do insurance as a search term, first you're gonna see not much seasonality at all here. We're looking at the past 12 months. You can adjust all sorts of different time periods. You can go to the past hour if you're looking at something that's been trending, past four hours, past seven days, 30 days, past five years, 2004 to present, or a custom time range. You can adjust by category, so if you wanna make sure that it stays in business and industrial, if you enter a search term or a topic that could be taken into two different categories, then that's where all categories can be useful. You can look at search terms and topics and break them down by different types of search. So YouTube search, for example, Google Shopping. This could be very useful depending on what it is you're promoting. And then you can adjust location as well. So if we keep scrolling down, you're gonna see interest over time, interest by subregion, some related topics. So if we look at home warranty as a topic is a rising topic. If we click on top related, you're gonna see 21 total topics here that they show are related to insurance. Related search queries. So you're gonna see here, these are all the rising search terms based around insurance. So some different things you can do here. You can see, okay, pet insurance, lemonade renters insurance, pumpkin pet insurance. It's good to see what some of these search queries even mean if you're covering the topic of insurance. Going to top, this gives you a great idea of some of the most popular topics based around whatever search term you enter. So if we come back to the top here, let's enter one more search term. So I own a beach decor website. So I can enter beach decor as a search term and looking at the United States, you can see 
Okay, it looks like it peaks here in July. Looks like it's dropped a lot in September. It's definitely a lot lower here in these colder months. And as it gets warmer and people are going to their beach homes more often, you can tell people are looking for beach decor more as well. Interest by subregion. So if I want to see, okay, who are the people that are going to be most likely to be interested in what I'm selling? So clearly you can see there's definitely more of a coast here. So some of these countries in the middle, nothing really at all. But what we can do is look by metro area. And if you look by metro area, this makes a lot of sense for beach decor. So Florida, all along where the Atlantic Ocean is, all over here. So we have some California. So all along where the Pacific Ocean is over here. So you can come up with some of the top metro areas. So, and you can also see seasonality here. So coming back over here, number three, seasonality. Number four, location trends can be very useful if you're trying to come up with different types of marketing or advertising campaigns and understanding when you should focus your budget, where you should focus your budget. Clearly, I should be focused on coastal towns here because they have the most interest in beach decor. And I can focus on some of these main markets here as I start to build my campaigns. I could focus on making sure my campaigns run from, let's say, May through about August here because the rest is not as popular, although March, not too bad either. So you can kind of come up with some different ideas for running marketing campaigns. Now coming back over here, looking at related topics and related search queries. So coming down, you could see related topics here. So some of the rising topics, some of them aren't always going to be overly relevant. So you might be able to come up with a few ideas by looking at rising, but all of these not really the greatest topics to kind of use on my blog, my beach decor blog. If I look at top here though, beach landform, so floor and decor, I can try to make sure that I have more specifically around flooring, which I don't. Wall, so the, basically the way I look at this is wall is a topic, so essentially people are looking for wall decorations for their beach home. House decorations for their beach home, same thing here. So if we come over looking at more topics, people are looking for beach decor ideas. People are looking for different ideas for their room. This is also accommodation type, so I don't really do anything geared towards travel, so wouldn't really cover that. Beach bathrooms, so coast, landform, not really much I could do with that. I can maybe cover specific cities that are a little bit more popular, like Virginia Beach, Boynton Beach. If I have specific decor related to those cities, that could also be another idea. Same thing related search queries over here, so they have some rising ones. Nothing really too good here. Sometimes you get good rising ones. I'll give you an example after this one. But what is useful is top. So floor decor, floor and decor. But what you could use some of these top search queries for by entering one of your main search terms that you're optimizing for is by coming up with subcategories. So wall decor here, obviously beach decor, beach home decor, all kind of the same. Floor decor, I really don't have anything about flooring. So if I do beach home flooring, I'm sure that's an article that would get some traffic, beach decor ideas, beach room decor, palm beach decor. So I could look specifically towards palm tree, palm leaf related decorations, if that's what people are looking for, or palm beach, Florida decorations. So bathroom, and most of these are just kind of general keywords, beach art, again, Boynton beach. So coming up with some different, I think there's a floor and decor store in Boynton beach. That's basically taken over the beach decor, Google trend. It looks like outdoor beach decor, wall art, Christmas decor. So seeing some of the different things that are actually trending can be really useful and coming up with some different search terms to make sure you're covering all these topics that people are actually searching for around your niche. Now, where this could be a little bit more helpful is let's say I do NFL and I'm doing the league. So I'm just looking at the entire NFL league. Obviously, it's very popular when games are being played, not so popular from when the Super Bowl ends up until basically games start being played again. So interest by subregion. So you can see, you know, where the most popular subregions are for the NFL. Keep scrolling down related topics here. So this could always be useful to make sure that you have some information about all these related topics rising and top, but I really like related queries better. So one thing you can do if we come over here to related queries, you see something like Weddle, Weddle game. So to me, I don't know what that means, but if I click on it, it will actually show me that it's people that were searching for Wordle. So the interest over time, you can see it kind of peaked really when there's no NFL games being played. So I can assume this is not a keyword related to the NFL. And if we scroll down, you're going to see related search queries, Wordle, Weddle Unlimited, Wordle game. So people must be going and searching Weddle instead of Wordle, unless that's another game I don't know about. So coming back to the NFL here, 
What can be useful is if you're looking at rising, and let's say you're someone who covers the NFL, you're a journalist, you're trying to find some topics, Kenny Pickett. So you do a quick Google search, why is Kenny Pickett trending? Keep coming down, Malik Willis, NFL free agents. So you can try to find some of these rising search terms and why they're rising, and then write your own story about them. If you're looking at top, you can make sure that you have all of these, again, subcategories on your website if you have an NFL-type website. So schedule, scores, keep coming back over here, games, the drafts. So all of these are just different subcategories that you can make sure you're covering. So coming back over here, related topics and related queries can be really useful, especially looking at the top queries I like using to come up with some subcategories. Rising topics and queries can be really useful for certain topics and keywords. For others, it's not really going to be helpful at all. Location and seasonality can really be useful as you're kind of planning your advertising and marketing campaigns, where you want to run your ads, when you want to run your ads, when you should focus your budget, where you should focus your budget, all important factors in coming up with a good marketing strategy. And then topic and search term research, just understanding some of the different things that people are searching related around whatever it is that you're covering. Now, last but not least, I'm going to go over our subscriptions. So with subscriptions, if we click over here on the left hand side, click on subscriptions, what you can do is choose topics or keywords and click on the plus sign down here in the bottom right hand corner. And let's just say I want to get a subscription about the topic and we'll just say digital marketing. Okay, so digital marketing search term plan internet marketing topic. So you'll see some of these different topics and some of these different search terms that people are looking up. So maybe what I want to do is we'll say internet marketing, the topic I want to get once a month region, I'll say United States. Okay, so we're going to use United States region, internet marketing topic. Once a month, I want to get an email where they're going to send me the most noteworthy events. Click on subscribe. And now we have a new subscription here. So I have search engine optimization, Google ads once a week, and I have internet marketing now once a month. So this is Google Trends. It's really useful for people who cover news. It's really useful for certain topics. It's not gonna be perfect for every single niche. If you're selling, let's say appliances, it might not be the greatest way to come up with exactly the most trending topics related around appliances. But if you are someone who's covering soccer or football, or you're, you're somebody who covers celebrity news, it's a great way to come up with what is trending, what people are actually looking up. And if you click on some of these different topics, you can learn why they're trending. So if I click on the Knicks, why they're trending, okay, it looks like just has to do with their game yesterday. So coming up with some different reasons why things are trending. So you can see baseball player looks like he was traded. Dallas Mavericks, so this just looks like it's based around the game. Shania Twain, net worth, not sure why she's really trending. So obviously a lot of these trends at the top are going to be more geared towards politics, especially recently since there's been a lot of elections, especially in the United States. But then you start getting more entertainment, you're getting more sports. So it can be really useful if you're in any of those niches and you can look at different countries as well. What is trending where? So if you have any questions about Google Trends and using it for marketing, please leave them in the comment section. Enter your topics up here, enter your search terms up here. If for example, you're someone who covers Google Ads, you can look at the search term and the topic, and you can look at all sorts of different topics like PPC advertising, internet marketing, see what's trending, see if there's any products that are trending, see what people are looking up, and it's gonna help guide some of your marketing decisions. And it can be really useful if you really have no clue what to write about on a certain day. Come in here to Google Trends and you'll find something by the time you're done. So if you have any questions about these six different ways you can use Google Trends to improve your marketing, please leave them in the comment section. Thanks for watching my video today and make sure you subscribe to the Surfside PPC YouTube channel.